Welcome back to Lesson 12, Connections, Part 3 of the SDS2 Getting Started series. We will now continue with the list, starting from the User Defined Connection. In Lesson 12, Connections, Part 2, we finished with looking at the User Connection. Remember, this is when you're taking control away from the system and you are applying values on top of what the system determines. We're now going to move on to the user defined connection. The user defined connection functions like a template for the user. This allows the system to go ahead and generate the connection that's specified in the user defined connection and then the system will simply replace the values with the form value from the user defined connection into the connection. This allows you to do multiple members at one time setting a user defined connection. Let me demonstrate. I'll begin by looking at this connection to see what the current configuration is. It is set to system, end plate, and has been processed. This is a very important point. Whenever using a user defined connection, the connection must always be set to system. What happens then is the system goes during process, it'll see that it's a user defined connection, it'll go ahead and develop the connection, and then simply replace the values for the design connection with the values from the user defined connection. So where do you create these user defined connections? Options, job, user defined connections. This is your setup. Next, let's create a new now for this new it's very important whenever you're coming up with a naming convention make it something that everybody can understand so for example for an end plate I'm going to go ahead and place an EP for the thickness I'm going to use a half for the number of rows of bolts are five again you can come up with your own naming convention that suits your office now the next part is very important what member type is this user defined connection going to be applied to? A beam. Material type, wide flange. This is a mistake that's commonly made. People will go ahead and apply a user defined design for a wide flange to, let's say, a channel material. What type of connection am I going to use? Let's go ahead and use an end plate connection type. Notice it expands all the connection specification for the end plate. We saw this before in member edit, we saw this before in auto standard. Next, web rotation. We saw this earlier when adding in members. You can have web vertical, you can have web normal, and you can have hip and valley. Again, if you're applying a user defined connection to a member that is set as web normal and the user defined set at web vertical, you'll run into some problems. And we're going to have a non moment. Now, over here, the connection specification, I'm going to leave it at wide gauge. Now, another tip whenever you see automatic in this screen or in the member edit screen this tells you that the system is going to grab the data from setup if you want to override that setup data you can always come in here and change it so for example I could set this to a safety offset or a safety notch so again automatic means the information is going to come from setup let's go ahead and leave the rest of the values as they are with an A36 grade plate Notice this little end plate button. This is your revise and review button. Where did we see this button before? Actually, we saw this button here in the member edit screen. So now I'm going to go into my revise and review fields. Now you'll notice that these are all set to auto. Whenever something is set to auto, that means the system is not going to replace that value in the connection. Let's go ahead and change this plate thickness to be a half inch. Next, I'm going to come down here and look at my rows of bolts. Let's go ahead and change this to five rolls of bolt. Now, what's really important here is that if you leave it at auto, the more you can leave it auto, the wider application you're going to get here. Again, if you want, you can also restrict it that you take every single field off of auto and you replace all the values within that particular connection. And if you can't determine what these fields, these prompts mean, you could always go into your help and then again go into those revise and review fields and select the end plate picture that you need and pull it off to the side. Let's go ahead and save this connection. 
Now if I would like to reuse this data for another connection type, I'll simply select the Save As. Once again, give this a name. In this case, I'm going to go 3 8 And I'm not going to have any rows on this one. Notice that we now have that end plate 3 8 marked up here. I'm going to come in, change my end plate thickness to 3 8 and let's leave the rows of bolts to be 5. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and save this connection. So now we have here two user-defined connections that we have created. Let's go ahead and add in that user-defined connection that we created. Again, input connection type go down to where you see user define it's going to now prompt the user define connection screen or list let's get that one with rows of five now I often get a question can you use a user defined auto standard you can but I really suggest you test it because you can get some uh, undesirable effects using a user defined in an auto standard connection type so test it first Go ahead and hit OK. System is now marked it for process. Let's go and run that back through process. And we can now see that the system used that user defined connection. Let's go ahead and take a look closer at this. It is set to a user defined. One thing about a user defined connection, just like a user, if we go into our print option here, you're going to see that the system is going to tell you, hey, this is a user connection engineer review required to evaluate the strength and the application of the SDS2 design calculations and the specific material and geometry. Notice the connection will not be indicated that it is passed. Again, that even though you still have a set at system, it is still a user connection. As we look at our revise and review fields right here, we are going to see that we now have, even though these are disabled, um, you can see the plate thickness of a half inch. Now, here's a tip. Even though this is set as a user defined, that doesn't stop me from going in and making further modifications to this particular connection. I can come back up here and put this back to a four rows of bolts. Now you'll notice, by the way, this salmon color. What happens here is when I make a change here, it's going to indicate what also will be changed. So if I want to actually change the plate depth, it's important that I change the rows of bolts and let the final change be the plate depth. Otherwise, I'm going to get some strange results. So for example, if I come in here and change this to 12, and then come down here and change this to five rows of bolts, now you start seeing these changes that start going on. So just a little side note. Let's go ahead and hit OK, run this back through process, and now I have a user defined and I've gone in and I changed it to user. Next, let's do a little bit of a broader application. I'm going to take a few members here on the second floor. And you can use, for example, the multi-edit. So maybe I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select these two members. Ah, let's go up this one over here. I'm going to right click and let's go into our edit. Now with multi-edit, as discussed earlier, anything gray means that this is different between those members that are selected. You can override that data by typing into a gray field. For now we're just going to leave that as it is. We're going to go down here to a user-defined connection. I'm going to now select the one that did not set the number of rows. Let's go ahead and run these back through process. One is an 18 by 35, the other is an 18 by 40. And let's go ahead and review these connections. I'm going to go ahead and turn these members to solid because everybody loves to see a solid member. And as we take a look, we can already see that this is a half inch plate, but let's go ahead and review this and so we can see that's a user defined connection with a half inch plate, or sorry, three eighths plate for this one. It was the other one that was a half inch. And again, same thing. System has gone through. And once again, using the multi-edit, we can see that this is, again, a three eighths plate. Now, there are other ways to change multiple connections other than the multi-edit. One of them 
is in the edit there's a tool here in change options that says end connections which allows me to go ahead and I can apply connections including the user defined connection to members select a list and make the changes I'm not going to make any changes that was just a quick demonstration We'll now move on to part four, which demonstrates forcing connections.